Um, so, uh, thanks to the previous speaker, well done, and also thank you for uh, talking about uh, groups and bias quite a bit. Uh, we'll continue uh, on, on this theme of group bias. This is joint work uh, by uh, Ali Fardasbi at Spotify Amsterdam, Fernando Diaz, uh, Carnegie Mellon, and uh, Mostafa uh, Degani at uh, Google DeepMind. And uh, I'm, I'm at the University of Amsterdam. Right, so let's get started. Um, group bias. So we're motivated and we're, we're uh, uh, by scenarios in, um, in HR. So people looking for jobs, uh, recruiters looking for people. Uh, and those are interesting ranking problems. Those are also very tough ranking problems. Um, that's where a lot of the intuitions come from. That's also where a lot of the motivating literature comes from. And, and uh, uh, group bias exists. I'll, I'll show you a few references uh, in a minute. Uh, and it, uh, it's very hard uh, to get out of people. Uh, we know this from working with uh, tons of uh, HR um, uh, people and recruiters, uh, training and retraining them has effect, but it's a slow effect. Um, and so there's a lot of attention for, uh, f f from this community to looking at um, uh, people ranking systems where if you see a problem, hopefully you can fix the problem much faster. Uh, of course, technology uh, might be part of the solution, but it's certainly not the solution by itself. Anyway, uh, that drives uh, of those, mo those that scenario, that context drives a lot of the research uh, that we've been doing, uh, including this paper um, on group bias. So we're looking for we're in in, a, in an expertise area. Um, we're looking for uh, people who might have the right expertise for uh, for a position, um, but some of the recruiters might be biased towards uh, clicking more on male candidates than on female candidates or the other way around, uh, or people from a certain, uh, with a certain educational background versus another educational background, or a certain economic background or geographic background, etc. And uh, what you'll see, uh, and what we show in the paper, is that group bias not only affects uh, the ranking quality, it also has a, a direct impact on, on fairness metrics. What we uh, proposed in this paper is uh, uh, a way of uh, uh, mitigating uh, group bias and uh, briefly the one line summary is here. Uh, we look at estimates over multiple um, instances and then uh, of a group and then uh, correct for the whole group. Uh, so the motivation um, bias and fairness, so uh, there's a lot of work on uh, context-based fairness, uh, you know, the presentation context, for instance, and uh, we, we've seen throughout the conference already various papers that uh, uh, propose interventions to either collect more data or to fix um, uh, some bias issues. Um, also underlying uh, uh, the previous talk, right, uh, strong intuitions about items with similar levels of utility or, or merit, they should receive uh, similar exposures. Uh, why should we care? Well, uh, bias towards uh, privileged groups uh, is often reinforced, uh, and what the systems, what a system learned from the ongoing interactions only uh, uh, enforces this, and in return uses judgment um, about the utility of items may also be um, uh, perturbed. Right, so fair exposure, we argue, is not enough, even if um, um, groups get the same exposure, uh, users may still judge them differently. Right, that's the, that's the point in the recruiter scenario. Um, one group may receive more clicks than the other, and that's something we'd like to help correct. So group membership biases, different groups may have different attractiveness uh, to users. And so in the paper, 
uh, we have a few s very simple uh, diagrams like this to, to, to illustrate uh, some of these concepts. So here we have two groups, the, the group of uh, squares and the group of circles. Um, right, and what we look at is uh, uh, they get roughly uh, the same exposure over the whole group. They get roughly the same relevance over the whole group uh, so that they get um, their expected click probability is roughly the same, but then it turns out that their actual click probability is different. As I said, uh, there's a lot of literature uh, that shows that this sort of group bias exists. Um, and uh, we've taken our inspiration from, uh, from the HR domain. And here we, we just sampled some uh, publications in that space. So uh, female managers have to show roughly twice as much evidence of competence as male managers uh, to, be a, to be seen as equally competent. Or um, uh, you know, in career search, results that are consistent with stereotypes uh, for a career are rated higher. So, um, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, models decomposing uh, uh, actions into uh, observables, so clicks, for instance, in uh, uh, um, examination and attractiveness. Uh, attractiveness, it turns out, is different for different groups. And so what we try to do in this paper is um, re-estimate the probability uh, of attractiveness using this beta parameter. And that parameter, uh, think of it as a, a group underestimation factor or a group propensity. And if, the, if beta is uh, less than one, we have an affected group, a negatively affected group. If it's not affected, then beta is one. Um, Here's an example. Uh, so the values on the x, here are two examples. The values on the x-axis are the, this beta parameter. And what we show is that uh, as beta um, goes down, meaning the affected group is affected more and more, uh, then not only do they get worse ranking quality, uh, but also the fairness uh, goes down. And so the main, the, the paper has uh, some theoretical results about uh, formalizing uh, how we estimate uh, the beta parameter, uh, and then it has a bunch of uh, experimental results. So the, um, I'm summarizing the most important uh, theoretical result here. So an important concept is the fraction of affected relevant items that are still as attractive as the non-affected relevant items. In the presence of group bias, uh, NDCG, so rank equality, and, and DTR, fa fairness metric, they change linearly with this fraction. Well, the change in, the, in uh, uh, EEL, another fairness metric, uh, is, uh, has a logarithmic shape. So correction, um, you know, of, we had, uh, in the first talk, I think, uh, IPS was mentioned, um, right? And uh, if we assume this, um, this uh, multiplicative setting, then we, we can think of IPS and IPS-based corrections. That's what we do. Uh, you have to remember where uh, we have a, not a context-based uh, problem, right? How were the results shown? How long were they shown? And we have a content-based uh, problem, so there's no easy fix in terms of a, an intervention or a swap. Um, so we have to, in the paper, we have to make uh, a few assumptions about uh, how the utility scores are distributed um, across groups. Um, there are some issues here. Of, you know, sparsity issues, um, if you're not careful, uh, instead of uh, thinking about equity, you collapse everything to uh, equality, 
so end, ending up with a, a same distribution assumption, which is not desirable in this setting. And so our solution is uh, this uh, amortized correction. So we aggregate queries um, with similar group propensity. And to, so to summarize these, these intuitions and our uh, solution, and then uh, how am I doing time-wise? Okay. Um, we model group bias with a multiplicative factor. Uh, we use um, IPS to correct for bias. It's not as simple as simply uh, as measuring uh, position bias because of uh, uh, equity not being the same as uh, equality. Um, so what do we do? We consider a set of queries instead of an individual query uh, with the corresponding uh, associated items, and then we measure group by the, the group bias parameter beta over this aggregated set of, uh, of scores. And then we show in the paper uh, experimentally that uh, this correction method, based on this uh, amortized measurement, um, is effective both for restoring uh, the ranking quality and fairness. So some experimental results. We look at two types of results. One is a tabular search. So think of queries that you see a lot. You see an awful lot. Uh, high, um, so head, head queries, we have a, a number of data sets. Um, we also look at uh, tail queries, uh, uh, so a more generic uh, learning to rank. There we use uh, um, Yahoo uh, web scope and uh, one of the MSLR data sets. Um, if we correct, uh, so beta, f um, if we estimate this beta close to its real value, um, sorry, this is uh, uh, the estimated beta which is close to its real value, uh, then we have uh, um, uh, the biased ranking, corrected ranking, uh, NDCD measurements, uh, and two types of uh, fairness measurement. Uh, the having a, a, a close to uh, correct uh, beta allows us to um, improve the, the ranking quality. It allows us to improve uh, DTR, uh, and it also allows us to improve, in this case, uh, lower is better, EEL. Um, we show in the paper uh, for a number of different settings uh, in more detail how, um, uh, how the different groups, the affected groups and the not affected groups um, get uh, uh, different outcomes for, fair, for fairness and for, um, for uh, accuracy. So looking back, what, what do, did we do in this paper? Uh, we argued based on previous work that uh, group bias exists. Um, we show that it uh, affects both ranking quality and fairness. Uh, we have some theoretical results, mostly on these, uh, on these tabular queries. And we have uh, more experimental results, both for tabular and LTR settings. The correction that we come up with um, is based on uh, various heuristic uh, assumptions, right? We came with our beta. Um, we estimate beta over, uh, uh, over uh, not over individual queries, but over um, uh, multiple items for a query. Um, one thing I didn't put in the slides is um, uh, we only looked uh, in this paper for uh, a single group. So uh, male, female, or um, so gender, or uh, geographic location. Uh, we can also generalize this to uh, an intersectional setting with multiple groups um, and uh, uh, group bias for, for intersectional, uh, in this in, in intersectional setting. What should be done next? Uh, we've assumed that everything is, st is static here, uh, but it's not static. Uh, bias people change, bias changes, how could we cater for this, how do we uh, modify uh, our estimates of beta. Um, uh, we also have to work out the, the details for the intersectional setting. 
Um, and there's a few more uh, richer scenarios that come out of the AHR domain that we'd also like to tackle in future work. So that's it. We have uh, the paper is online, obviously, but we also have uh, code uh, that implements the, the paper. The link is not on the slide, but it is um, in the paper. Thanks.